The views expressed on this program are those of the producers and individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Sun Prairie Media Center staff, its video service providers, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Hello and welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit, and the man seated next to me remembers where he was when Spider-Man entered his life. His name is Mike Roth. <laughs> we were just talking about I that. Know. Yes, it was the electric company on PBS. Uh, famous, you've heard of PBS? I've heard of it, it yes. It's a great channel. Yes. Um, I remember watching Electric Company and hearing the, hey, you guys, uh -huh. and Spider-Man always like bent things and he was sure. super strong, and then they had another guy who couldn't do the things Spider-Man could do. Oh, few people can. No, he's got spider skills. Yeah, he spidey do, senses. He's he got all kinds all of spider things. things. He's pretty cool. And yeah. uh, ever since then, I've always wanted to web sling and uh, mm -hmm. swing from buildings, even though I'm terrified of heights. I figured if I was Spider-Man, I'd get over it. Sure. Yeah. I don't think it's too late for you to be the next Peter Parker. They're always recasting Spider-Man. Now that they're opening up the multiverse, yeah. I could be the Spider-Man that just doesn't have any powers. I like this. I just walk around That's going, I'm Spider-Man. Yeah, you're the guy who just tells people you're Spider-Man. Uh -huh. I like this. I think we can make this happen, guys. <laughs> Uh, this week is a show that we love. It is one that we do annually because uh, this weekend, as we are recording, is the Oscars. And so this week we are making our predictions as well as handing out our own awards for who we think should win. And of course we have a movie to review and that's what I'm going to get started with this week with our streaming spotlight. We have a film called Songbird. I believe this is over. Was this over on Netflix? Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, from director Adam Mason, uh, written and directed by Adam Mason. It is a film that is proudly shot during the COVID pandemic and very happy to be opportunistic of it. Uh, we open in the near future as COVID-23 is the new mutation wiping out civilization, forcing martial law and quarantine zones. People are not allowed to leave at all. Those who are immune to this COVID strain wear these cool little yellow bracelets that allow them to move about the city. And one such person is Nico, a bike messenger, played by KJ Appa. Um, he works for a man named Lester, played by Craig Robinson, who uh, is a man who provides things for rich people who aren't allowed outside. Nico also has a girlfriend, Sarah, played by Sophia Carson, uh, that he sees via Zoom, as you do. Uh, as she lives with her mother, grandmother, can't remember which it was, Gra undetermined no, older, yes. relative. older relative. <laughs> um, you also have Bradley Whitford and Demi Moore as a rich couple who are uh, into nefarious things like providing black market immunity bracelets mm -hmm. and other things. Uh, you, I mean, this is a cast. Oh, produced by Michael Bay. Of course. You have Ale <laughs> uh, Alexandra Daddario, who is a new type of singer in the near future, who communicates with her fans solely online. And then you have Paul Walter Hauser, who uh, plays a man who is a wheelchair-bound uh, stalker. He also works for Lester mm -hmm. uh, and stalks Alexander Daddario and uh, uses his drone to get outside and do things. Which really doesn't make sense because they also have the GPS and yeah. they kind of let you know, yeah, I know where you are because of GPS, but those are can't do anything else. Let's talk about something. <laughs> if you're looking for things to make sense, mm -hmm. you've come to the wrong place. Uh, but the real threat in this movie is the head of the sanitation department, uh, a man named Emmett Harland, uh, because the sanitation department has been given the power and responsibility of killing those who may be sick. Mm -hmm. And Emmett Harland loves his job. Yes, he does. Uh, played by Peter Stormare. Um, and Sarah's mother, grandmother, is one of those who's showing signs of illness, so Nico has to set about trying to get them immunity bracelets in a race against time. Uh, you have Bradley Whitford, his character being a total dirtbag, going out there breaking all protocols, he doesn't care. Uh, just being a horrible person uh, and uh, risking himself and others for very unimportant things. And it's, it's a film that has a lot of characters yeah. and underserves all the storylines. Mm -hmm. There's no way you could 
feed all these different <laughs> twists and storylines. You have a lot of big name actors. Yes. And um, it, remarkably shot in just two and a half weeks, it shows. It yeah. really does show. Yeah. Um, all these actors probably, I've seen them in other things where they did better. But all it, of them. All of them. There was no good acting in here. There was actually nothing redeemable. Um, I'm just going to start with the cinematics. Uh, they got this brand new camera. It's uh, shoot 6K. You really can't tell. Um, right. A lot of it is just really bad shots. And it looked like the camera was given to someone who was like all chalked up of Code Red Mountain Dew yeah, and yeah. heroin. And he, he takes a shaky cam to a new level where it's not just a two-dimensional shaky cam, but he also zooms up in yes. diagonals and go backs and forth. And this is to artificially create some tension, yeah. such as the the opening scene where the guy has this hybrid bike and he's going through these uh, streets that are completely deserted and he got the shaky and it's supposed to be extreme, but this is not BMX. This is not rad. They're empty streets. I have more danger on my commutes. Well, and, <laughs> and for large swaths of this movie, nobody is in the same room as someone else because it's shot during COVID. Yeah. And so you feel that after a while, like, yeah, didn't, didn't know, everyone's over Zoom. I don't need to watch a movie over Zoom. Mm -hmm. It's shot terribly. It really Acting is. was terrible. The story was terrible. It's like a, it's like a fever dream an anti-masker has. It's like, what so, happened if the government did this? It's so tone deaf. And if you could even bring it down to, well, the timing was good, it's not. No. If maybe this was early last year when the scare was starting to a rise of everybody being shut into their homes, but you're at the point now where a lot of people are getting vaccinated. If they want the vaccination, you could go out there. Pe things are opening up again. This doesn't feel relevant, even as a what if. What if? Well, and just the whole thing of like, oh, you know, in four years, like it opens up. Like, you remember when fake news was a thing? You're gonna, you're gonna wish that was back or yeah. whatever. You know, like this is way worse. It's like the government's locking you in your houses now, and there's no way to get out. And the film is just completely tone deaf. Mm -hmm. The message is stupid. There's just, there's, it, it makes quarantine out to be like the purge. Yeah. You know, like, oh man, you have to be special to get out of your house when this <laughs> COVID-23 hits and all this. And it's just, it's so, it's terrible filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. There's the only redeeming thing about this movie for me was Peter Stormare. I love Peter Stormare. Okay. And I love his, because he feels like he's having fun as Emmett. Okay. The, the the sanitation guy. He seems yeah. like he's having fun in this role, going out and uh, that going was out, terrible. That's pretty good. <laughs> going out and uh, uh, eradicating people. Mm -hmm. He was the one character in the movie. I'm like, I want more of him. I want to see more of him on, in this movie. But outside of that, everyone else was just awful. And KJ Apple, who's the star of this movie, really as Nico. Uh -huh. It's kind of his movie. I think he was the last movie I saw in theaters before the shutdown. He was in. I can't remember the name. I still believe or something. It was a faith okay. movie. It was the last movie I saw in theaters before the shutdown a year ago. And now he's in this one. And it's like, wow, you poor guy. And it, you made a bad choice. And it's terrible because he came from a really popular show. Sure. that He does really well. He's Archie. He's Archie. Riverdale is a fantastic show. Yeah. And uh, I feel like he's flushing his career down the toilet with these really this, bad choices. This didn't help. Uh, this was even banned for just a little bit, which is like its only redeeming fact sure. is, ooh, this is the edgy thing that's out. It's but not. it was banned for like 24 hours. And the next day they're like, okay, fine. You could shoot it. Whatever. You didn't need to bother. Uh, what do you end up giving Songbird, sir? Zero. Ooh, it, it's, look there out. is nothing redeeming there to this go. movie. I cannot give it a single, if anything, if you want to feel sick, if you had too much sugar and you just want to throw up, watch this movie. There you that's, go. That's great. The rare zero star score from Mike Roth. Uh, I'm going to give the film one star. Peter Stormare gets one star out of me. Uh, <laughs> but this movie's terrible. There is no need to watch this movie. There's so many other things you could watch. In fact, you could watch some of the movies we're about to talk about if you need to catch up because... Good segue. Thank you. Because <laughs> it is time... For us to hand out some awards in a segment we call, and the Oscars go to, uh, the Oscar ceremony is this weekend, Sunday, April 25th, uh, and uh, we are going to uh, just dig in on some of the categories, not all of them, some of the big categories. Out of curiosity, um, yeah. do you know how we're watching this? Is it is I'm it televised? Watch it on TV? Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah. Uh, and so I'm going to get us started with the category, and uh, as we do every year, 
you, uh, you have an award that you're going to hand out who you would give your personal Oscar to, and then mm -hmm. who you predict is actually going to walk away with it. Yep, maybe yep. the same, maybe completely different. So we're going to start out with our, our animated feature category. And we had uh, a great year of animated features. Yes. Really solid year. Uh, and the, the nominees this year are Soul, Onward, Over the Moon, Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon, and Wolf Walkers. Mm -hmm. Sir, I ask, who do you give the Mikey to? All these movies, fantastic. Yeah. Right, Wolf Walkers was fantastic. Yeah. But by far, uh, one of my favorite movies of the year was Soul. Had a lot of heart. It was complex message, but kind of brought down where everybody could enjoy it. It is a kid's film. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. Um, soundtrack, perfect. Um, the voice acting, perfect. Um, the amount of content you get out of this movie, this was a kind of classic movie. best of Pixar type of It, it is. Yeah. And, um, so who do you predict is actually going to get the award? I'm actually going to predict it's going to be Soul. Yeah. Uh, next, I think they're hem-hawing probably on Wolf Walkers because that was also fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, the award I would hand out, uh, just edging out Soul, was Wolf Walkers for me. Cartoon mm -hmm. Saloon's great film. I love it. I, when, at my end of year rankings, I had it just ahead of Soul. Mm -hmm. It just hit me a little, a little harder, but um, that's who I would hand it to. But I do agree with you. I think that uh, during the telecast, that Soul will walk away with the trophy. It is tough. I mean, the it's, Wolf Walkers animation was different. I love it. It, it was beautiful. I love it. it is beautiful. Uh, the next category we're going to go to is Best Original Screenplay, and the nominees are Promising Young Woman, Minari, Sound of Metal, Judas and the Black Messiah, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. Sir, who would you give your award to? Um, I, I would give it to Trial of Chicago 7. You it sure? is one of my best original, screen, best original screenplay. Uh huh. Oh. Um, you're Let's right. look up here and see what, see what uh, Mara put it at. Maybe you're right. Uh oh. No, <laughs> it isn't. Um, my best would be. Uh, soul. There it is. Now that, yeah. Um, you, this I, was one you went back and forth on like I, four times. I did, I did. Um, I believe that, uh, like I said, um, this has a little bit of everything. It is a deep, powerful movie that is good for everyone. It, it's made for every age, um, from old to young, obviously. This was a beautiful film. This it is your one favorite of my, movie of the year. It is my favorite movie of the year, and that's kind of foreshadowing later things, but... Uh, Unfortunately, not among the nominees to actually win the trophy, so who do you predict will win the trophy? Um, I would guess uh, it would be Trial of Chicago 7. There you go. Yeah, the Aaron Sorkin film. Yeah, and, and I did really like this film, too. Uh, yeah, obviously. Because yeah. I opened it up all wrong. And he <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, my award, I'm, I'm really torn between three films for this category. And um, I really loved Mank. I think Mank was great. I think Promising Young Woman, very good. But I would actually give mine to Sound of Metal. I think it's a category that maybe it wasn't my favorite movie of the year, mm -hmm. but the idea uh, of, of this deaf drummer, this guy, this drummer who loses his hearing uh, and, uh, and is also an addict, and the story that he goes through, and Riz Ahmed is great in this movie. I think it's really interesting, something that I haven't seen before. I do expect this movie to win a lot of technical awards because the sound mm -hmm. mixing and stuff was incredible. Uh, but that's who I would give it to. I don't think they're actually going to win. I would, uh, my prediction for who's actually going to win the Oscar for original screenplay is Promising Young Woman. I think that uh, this is a movie that uh, just seems to be gaining a lot of traction. I think it's great. Really original. Mm -hmm. It's a movie that kind of caught me off guard. And I remember watching the trailers for this right before the theaters closed. And yeah. I thought it was odd. It was a little bit too close to Birds of Prey. And <laughs> so when I saw her hair and the costume. That's really only the, like, the, <laughs> the last like seven minutes of the movie. Really? Is her it, looking like they that. They made yeah. it seem like it was going to be the whole movie. No, nope, <laughs> just, just the end of it. Uh, let's go to Best Adapted Screenplay, sir. The nominees are The Father, One Night in Miami, Borat Subsequent Movie Film, Nomadland, and The White Tiger. Who do you give the Mikey to? I'm going to give it to uh, The Nomadland. Um, I'm confused on how some of these got in there, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. Nomadland was definitely um, a, a great feature. Yeah. And your prediction then? I'm also saying Nomadland. Yeah. 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 Um, 
My award, I'm, I'm giving it to No Man Land. I think it was great. Uh, I do think that White Tiger is very close as far as a really interesting screenplay. Mm-hmm. But uh, No Man Land is just so spectacular. And so, echoing you, I give him my award. I also predict that No Man Land will win the screenplay Oscar. We should have made a little... Little trophies? Uh, yeah, little trophies. Yours yeah, looking like a late. rabbit, me look like a I think a we mic. talked about this last year. Yeah, like, we yeah, I'll didn't get on do that. it. Mm. I did not forge one. Nah. I'll start off. I'll fire no, up the kiln. I'll, I'll make a forgery get... for you. All right, good. <laughs> uh, let's move on to Best Supporting Actor, where the nominees are Paul Racy for Sound of Metal, Leslie Odom Jr. for One Night in Miami, Lakeith Stanfield for Judas and the Black Messiah, Daniel Kaluuya also for Judas and the Black Messiah, and Sasha Baron Cohen for The Trial of the Chicago 7. Sir, who are you handing your award to? Here? I'm giving it to Sasha Baron Cohen for uh, Trial of Chicago 7. Um, main reason is I didn't think he could act like this. Mm. Um, every character that I see is usually a crazy character he's using to fake people into thinking he's someone else. And to see him take a role that was serious yet funny at the same time, um, I, I was impressed. I really was. So um, give him kudos for acting out of his wheelhouse. I think he's a really good actor. Like I've seen, you know, in in uh, in Hugo, and uh, um, I mean, it's, it, he's been in a few musicals. Hugo, uh, Les Mis. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's okay. good. Uh, yeah. Uh, who do you think will walk away with the trophy Sunday night? I, it's more of a hope, uh, but I'm still going to go with Sasha Baron Cohen. Sure. I think he's going to get something because a lot of people like the Borat movies. And they're not going to give it to him for Borat. Yeah, I'm really shocked that Borat got as much love as it did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, my award, I am going to give it to Daniel Kaluuya for Judas and the Black Messiah playing Fred Hampton. Uh, interesting that he and Lakeith Stanfield are both nominated for supporting actor roles in this movie. Um, but I think he was uh, a powerful presence on screen. And especially his final speech in that movie gives me chills every time I watch it. I think he is... He's great. Uh, very well deserving. There's, a, there's some really well deserving actors in here. Uh, and that's also my prediction. I think that he will get it this year. Uh, I hope he does. Although I love pretty much everyone in this category. Uh, let's move on, sir, to Best Supporting Actress, where the nominees are Amanda Seyfried for Mank, Olivia Coleman for The Father, Glenn Close for Hillbilly Elegy. Marie Bakalova for Borat's subsequent movie film, and Yu Jung Yoon for Minari. Who do you give your award to? I'm giving it to Amanda Seyfried for uh, Mank, and I also believe she is going to win. Also, um, nice. not see a lot of the Academy Awards. I feel like uh, it also plays a lot of politics more oh, than actual yeah. um, best of. But um, she did a really good job, mm-hmm. and. I, She's probably one of the best parts of the movie for me. Uh, you talked about uh, Sasha Baron Cohen acting outside his wheelhouse. I thought she did in this film because I'm not a big fan of hers. I okay. think she detracts in some films. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed her in Mank. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, poor Glenn Close, by the way, uh, nominated eight times now. She has yet to win an Oscar. So you're saying there's a possibility? I hope not because Hillbilly Elegy as a movie was awful. But it was terrible. And she, look, yes, she stood out as the best part of that movie, but mm-hmm. she still was a star of one of the worst movies made last year. And, and sometimes and I. Physical transformation can't just get you an award. No. Uh, no, that, you're right. And She didn't make anyone around her better. But physical transformation won people awards in it the has. past. It has. Uh, but I am giving my award to Yu Jung Yoon from Minari. She plays the grandmother in that. She is. Hilarious. She is the heart of that film, and uh, her interactions with the uh, with her grandson are wonderful. And what made me love that movie, and so I'm giving her uh, what do we the, the rabbit? She gets my award, <laughs> and uh, I'm actually predicting that she'll win it. I think she's gonna get it because I don't think I think Minari was a great film, and I don't think it's gonna win a lot of awards. So I think mm-hmm. she's kind of the one that could get an award out of the, the whole cool. crew. Uh, let's go to lead actor, sir, where we have Gary Oldman in Mank. We have Steven Yoon in Minari. We have Riz Ahmed for Sound of Metal. Anthony Hopkins for The Father. And Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Who gets the Mikey? Off the list, uh, Anthony Mackey All for right. The uh, Banker. I love this movie. It was great. Um, really didn't get as much love mm-hmm. as I thought it should. And Anthony Mackey is a fantastic actor. And he I is. think people should know this. So it's He's not just... Uh, a Marvel hero. He's been in a lot of things, and he 
kind of comes off a little bit like Tom Hanks. He's extremely charming. He could be funny. He could be bold. He could be demanding. He goes across the board on every emotion that you expect and want to believe from an actor. And I think he did it in The Banker. I, I think he did a fantastic job. Nice. And I'd like I like to see. when you go off the board with yeah. it. But, but he can't win it. He can't win it. So who do you think actually will win? I it? think it will be uh, Chadwick Bosman for Ma Rainey. Um, he was great, but also I think it's going to be a little bit political too because he just recently passed and they're, want, they're going to want to uh, honor him. Absolutely. And I think this is how they're going to do it. Um, for my award, I'm also going off the board, off the list, uh, and I'm going with Delroy Lindo from *De Five Bloods*. Okay. I thought he was tremendous and a really complex character, a guy who's been suffering since Vietnam, mm -hmm. the tragedies that he saw and was part of, and 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 suffering from guilt from thing his, for decades of something that he did during that war. Also, the the imagery of this strong black man with the red mega hat on and yeah. in a time that, of a lot of turmoil and I think he had a lot put on him and he carried that film and he's the other thing is he's not normally like the lead in movies I think Delroy Lindo is usually the best part of something he's in but he's always a supporting guy yeah I like that he was a lead in this and I, I, I want him to be recognized because I think he was tremendous. I'll tell you what, that movie is like something where the first time I watched it, it was like, all right, it was good, but not great. It's something that really does stick with you. Yeah. I remember that movie extremely well, and that's a quality I think is should be in all best movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which we a lot of times don't see. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, Delroy Lindo was not nominated. I thought he should have been. And so I agree with you. My prediction is that Chadwick Boseman is going to win for Ma Rainey's. He was great in this role. And, you know, posthumously, the movie comes out after his death. And it, mm -hmm. is, it, was, it was a heartbreaking role, especially some of the things that he was saying in the movie really echoed. Um, I think he was great. And, uh, you know, call it lifetime achievement. But he, he definitely deserved it in this. So I think it will be Chadwick Boseman as well. Let's go to our best lead actress category, where we have Frances McDormand for Nomadland, Vanessa Kirby for Pieces of a Woman, Viola Davis for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Carrie Mulligan for Promising Young Woman, and Andra Day for The United States versus Billie Holiday. Who are you giving the Mikey to? This isn't the first time I've given the Mikey to Viola Davis. Sure. She is fantastic. I don't think she was out of her wheelhouse. She usually plays someone who is bold and a lot of times frustrated and angry. Yeah. But, wow, she did a fantastic job she in this. I, I think uh, she is really the highlight of the movie. And um, but, She is with most things she's in. <laughs> but I don't think... Uh, but you I don't, don't think, think she's, she's actually going to get it. Who th do you think will? I think they love Frances McDormand, and she is going to win it for Nomad. I think Nomad's going to do a lot of sweeping. Yeah, I, I think Nomad's going to do well. Um, I think this is really the toughest category this year. I think so many deserving actresses are in here with amazing performances, mm -hmm. and each of these five are really well chosen. I think yeah. this is the toughest category for me to choose from because I really love all these performances. My award... It's splitting hairs, but I'm going to go, I would give it to Andrew Day for the United States versus Billie Holiday. Okay. I remember watching it going, this is one of the best performances I've seen this year. Yeah. She's so good in a mediocre movie mm -hmm. that, it, it, but she just, she embodied Billie Holiday. I have, I love everyone in this category. It's yeah. tough. Um, my prediction though, I think it's tough. I think, it is. I think it's going to be. Carrie Mulligan for Promising Young Woman. Really? I do. I think they're going to give it to her. She is a chameleon in that film. She's great. I've watched this movie a couple times now. I think she's amazing. And I kind of think Viola Davis has won a couple of Oscars recently, and I kind of think they might cool it down on it. Yeah. Same with Frances McDormand. Frances McDormand's won a couple of Oscars recently. Mm -hmm. And they might go, well, let's go with the new face. But... I don't know. I think it's I think it's great. All well deserving. They're not going to Meryl Streep. Someone we need a new Meryl Streep. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, let's go to best director, where we have David Fincher for Mank, Thomas Vinterberg for Another Round. Very surprising nomination for there. Uh, Lee Isaac Chung for Minari, Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman, and Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. This feels like an easy one to me. I, I do too. Um, I. I'm going to go with Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. Um, I did not know that this movie had so many people who were actually in that Nomads. situation. They 
And it takes good direction to be able to make people who are amateur actors and make them feel real. Yeah. Um, I've seen, we've seen a lot of times where they bring in the real people to do a movie. And it's, and it's very noticeable. Yeah. This one, it was a complete surprise. And to have so many, the majority of your actors, amateurs who are out in the field doing what she is writing about, um, I thought was amazing. I and agree. So I, I think well-deserved win and Mikey. Nice. And I agree. I, I I would give her the award. I think she directed the best movie of the year. And I think she will be well-deserved uh, by winning the the award for best director of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's go to best picture, though. The big category, sir. Big one. Uh, we have Mank, Sound of Metal, Judas and the Black Messiah, The Father, Promising Young Woman, Minari, Nomadland, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. Who are you giving the Mikey to? And I already spoiled it. Um, Soul. Sure. And like I said, uh, I truly believe this is the best movie of the year. We had a lousy year. We really did. It, we could rave about all these movies because they're fantastic, but I don't think any of the other movies really needed to be the best picture of the year mm-hmm. for this particular year. I'm surprised year. it didn't get nominated. This would be the only time I would ever see... Have we ever had an animated movie as oh, yeah. the best nominated? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, Beauty and the Beast was... Oh. We had a couple of them, a couple of Pixar films. I, uh, Up was, Inside Out was. I, I feel like if this was a year where animated was to win, yeah. this could have been the year, and this could have been the movie. They cannot. So who do you predict will win? Um, I would say Nomad Land. That, that's yeah. where I'm going. Yeah. I think this is a, another great grouping of Best Picture. I just wish they would have used all 10 available slots. They nominated eight films. Uh-huh. I wish they would have nominated either Soul or Ma Rainey's Black Bottom or One Night in Miami. I think all of them were deserve of, of that recognition just to be saying, hey, we're an Oscar-nominated film. Yeah. Um, I wish they would have just filled the category out. But um, my my award and my prediction both are Nomadland. I think Nomadland is the best movie of the year. I think Hollywood's going to recognize it being the best movie of the year. Uh, and uh, like you said, I think they're going to go home with several awards yeah. uh, Sunday night. So those are our awards and our predictions. Next week we'll be talking about what actually happened at the Oscars, <laughs> yep. recapping and see how we did. Uh, let's quickly take a look ahead, though, sir, at what is coming soon, the weekend of April 30th. we got some movies coming out. Over on Amazon Prime, we have a film called Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. This stars Michael B. Jordan, Jody Turner-Smith, and Guy Pearce in a classic Tom Clancy spy thriller. I love Tom Clancy spy thrillers so yep. much. Love them. Love playing the video games. Love reading the books. <laughs> and Michael B. Jordan's in it. I'm all about it. Uh, we also have a, uh, a horror mystery called Things Heard and Seen, which is a horror mystery about an artist suspecting something sinister in her marriage. Stars Amanda Seyfried, uh, mm. Karen Allen, and F. Murray Abraham. Quite a cast. Uh, and then over on Netflix, we have an animated movie, which looks really interesting to me. It's called The Mitchells vs. The Machines. It is an animated adventure about a family on vacation who gets caught up in the robot apocalypse. This is from Sony mm. Studios. has a huge voice cast. Like, just, I couldn't even write them all down. It's massive voice cast. We've seen uh, huge voice casts where the movie's just kind of... Yeah, this is, uh, it's interesting to me. I, it, okay. it looks really, really good to me. Oh, just visually. Really good. Uh, I like the look of it. But uh, And then in theaters, we have a film called Separation, which is a horror, another horror movie uh, about a young girl and her artist father and the ghost of her dead mother hanging out. <laughs> I don't know what happens in there. <laughs> you will tell me, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> before we go any further, though, we have to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Palace Cinema is the place to be. It's the place to watch Separation. Uh, next week, sir, we're going to be talking about films such as Mortal Kombat, uh, Wild Mountain Time, and Stowaway, and, of course, recapping the Academy Awards. I can't wait for it. But until that time, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.